inauguration that happened on uh I want to say Wednesday. Is that Wednesday? Uh yeah, I think I believe that it happened on Wednesday. Um and immediately like there there was this whole thing of like uh Biden was going to get right to work, which is which is fine, right? Like that's sort of the thing that he that all the presidents always do is like, "Oh, on day 1." And then it's like inauguration happens on day 1 and they're like, "We're going to go party." <laughs> We're going to go to this fucking, you know, invite only $300 a plate party. Uh, but he but he went and and, uh, and and started doing some executive orders. And primarily what he did was undo all the shit that Trump did, which is which is kind of like a fuck you move. And, and the dude hates Trump more than anything. Right. Like every one of his speeches has a personal dig at Trump. It all has a personal dig at Trump. Like he'll talk about policy for like a minute and then he's like, let me tell you something about this fucking Trump guy. <laughs> and then he takes into like how shitty Trump is. And it's like, yeah, we get it. But what are you going to do to differentiate yourself from him? Uh, and that was the question. So he basically went in in the way that he's showing that he's going to dif differentiate himself from him is by undoing all the shit that Trump did. And some of the stuff is like, I, I feel like this is all like you could have done this throughout the week. You didn't have to sit and do it all in one week. That's why I kind of feel like this is this is a little bit more performative than anything else. Um, what you could have done in it to, to begin with, there's several executive orders uh, that he could have signed on his first day to help the American people. Right. So he's got this plan for federal, you know, making it uh, masks have to be worn within federal buildings. But didn't he say that there was going to be a national mask mandate? that you would have to wear a mask anytime you enter like a, a a grocery store with some essential workers so or or like a nursing home or whatever like that was sort of the idea that was proposed to us uh is that he's going to but that, but no again like i mentioned a few weeks ago or not even a few weeks ago maybe it was last week he's going to get us on a technicality just like he did with the $2,000 checks, right? Oh, if you if you vote for, uh, blue in Georgia and Georgia turns Democratic, we'll, we'll get all the $2,000 checks immediately. And now we're finding out that that's not going to happen, right? And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But what he did was he undid Trump a lot of Trump's immigration policies, uh, which if you remember back in 2017, which is about 17,000 years ago, uh, <laughs> in 2017, uh, he uh, he put out the Muslim ban, and he was basically like he was basically jumping off, uh, like carrying forward uh, a lot of shit that the Obama administration had set up in terms of immigration. He also he also was trying to undo DACA, uh, and he placed a lot more restrictions on DACA, which DACA is not perfect in and of itself. It's sort of a stopgap measure, right? Because it was just like, oh man, we we ended up having a bunch of these kids show up with these families. Uh, so what are we going to do? Are we going to deport children as well as adults? Uh, so it was kind of the stopgap measure of like, okay, well, we'll 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 have the kids stay here. If you came here when you were younger, obviously you didn't make the decision by yourself, and so we're gonna we're actually gonna have some compassion for you, and so. But Trump was just like, oh, DACA is evil, uh, uh, you know, and then when he, it was like this jumping off point from the anchor babies bullshit that Republicans like to throw. Oh, they're the immigrants are coming here and and uh, and and having babies specifically to fuck over American citizens. And it's like, I don't think that's that's not how it works. And now you just painted all immigrants as like weird fucking sociopaths. And that's not true, because I can tell you that there's plenty of Americans that have kids you know, for very sociopathic reasons. Uh, so maybe we don't jump, d jump down that point. But the Muslim ban specifically, um, I don't think it actually ever went through. The, the Muslim ban too was, it was like, he was just picking countries that had already been chosen uh, to be under like national security watch. Like there were a bunch of African countries and, and Muslim countries under the Obama administration and under the Bush administration. Like they were just carryovers from both of those administrations. So, you know, if Obama didn't want a uh, xenophobic um, immigration policy to be carried on beyond his administration, he could have immediately been like, OK, we're going to try to figure out what a... Um, what a what a what a, a more compassionate way of looking at that is, 
Um, but he didn't. He just kind of left it the way that it is because he expanded warfare in, in more Muslim countries. So, um, But the Muslim ban, if you remember, there was a bunch of people that just went to air- airports and occupied them. There were activists that went out there and like protested this Muslim ban. And that's what that's when he backed off of it and kept it the same way that it was under the Obama administration. And I'm not saying don't don't reverse it uh, because it's crazy to be like, oh, the, these people are not allowed to come into the country after we've waged war in their country and destroyed their homes. Like, <laughs> like that's the thing that they don't talk about, right? When it comes to immigration and refugees is that they don't talk about why these refugees and immigrants are coming to different countries. Um, a lot of them come here because of war, because of climate change, because of economic sanctions put on these countries by America, right? Because America dictates what other countries' economy is supposed to be like, which is bullshit. Like they do that with Venezuela and Iran. Like right now, uh, under the Trump administration, uh, well, but from the Trump administration, there, there was a lot more sanctions put on Iran because Mike Pompeo is a fucking sociopathic maniac that has had it in for Iran from the, the time that he even heard about the CIA. Like this guy is a, an insane asshole. So uh, all of these reasons are why immigrants decide to come to different countries, right? Like the European refugee crisis was d- connected to all the wars in that region. Like that's why they're going there because they've lost their homes and they have nowhere else to go. And there's a terror group on one side and then there's operation, whatever freedom on the other side. And they're both bombing the shit out of their homes. Like that's what's happening, you know? And then you have climate change problems and you have, you, you have natural disasters that occur. And if we are this, this compassionate, empathetic country, shouldn't we figure out a way to help these people if we're the richest country in the whole world and we have all of these resources and all of these uh these wonderful amazing things to help all these people shouldn't we figure out a way to help these people isn't that isn't that the compassionate thing to do so i think i think addressing something like that is important when you're when you're talking about immigration when you're talking about refugees when you're talking about these sort of issues not only that uh there, there's an executive order that Biden could have put forward that would have actually helped immigrants a whole lot more than just un, than just undoing the shit that Trump did. And I'm not saying don't undo the shit that Trump did. Go ahead and do that. But you actually have an executive order that you can uh, put forward, which is grant immigrants protected status uh, under a natural disaster. That is something that is that that is within his power to do. He could grant immigrants protected status uh, under the fact that we're in a natural disaster. That means that they can't be deported. They can't be attacked by ICE, which was also formed under the Obama administration uh, in 2009. And it complicates all of the like immigrant policing that like <laughs> it just overcomplicates everything. Like what does border control do versus what does ICE do? And, you know, like ICE is also going through with like no knock warrants for immigrants and tearing families apart. Uh, so you could put them under under uh, this protected status. That would also mean that people that are in immigrant detention centers will probably have to go be let go to go back to their families. There's also no talk about closures of the immigrant detention centers that were built under Obama and used by Trump. Right. So. I know a couple people have talked about it. It's like Lee Campus talked about how Obama kind of handed a dictator's handbook over to Trump, who who wants to be an authoritarian, like he wants to be the strong man figure that everybody's going to love. Uh, so things got kind of worse because there was no forethought, and there should be forethought when when you're when you're making these sort of large. Uh, sweeping legislations of like, oh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to build immigrant detention centers. Well, what if the person you think is going to win doesn't fucking win? Like, what are they going to do with it? So you kind of have to have some forethought in all this. That's why whenever you put protective laws in place, you have to put some kind of additional protection so that the laws can't be stripped. And, and people, you know, like some of these people don't lose their homes or get put into detention centers and shit. Uh, to go back to the to the mandates and all that stuff, uh, I do see a comment about the authority he has. That that's not my point. Uh, my my point is he talked about putting a national mask mandate um, and made it sound like it was going to be this big mandate, 
for like, oh, everybody's going to have to wear a mask as a as like part of a law. Um, that's what it sounded like. Right. It's the same thing with the two thousand dollar check is he said we'd all get two thousand dollars immediately. We're like, oh, great. And we finally get two thousand dollar checks. But that's all been delayed. First of all, now it's fourteen hundred because of the technicality. Uh, and realistically, if if you look at the fact that we've needed a UBI since the very beginning of all this, they owe us twenty two thousand uh, dollars to every American citizen that has a Social Security number is is basically how that should be done. I, you know, I, I think that that's the easiest way to do it. Look at every American that has a Social Security number and give them two thousand dollars every month. Could have been done. Uh, lack of political will. He did extend moratoriums until the end of March, uh, which is nice. But again, we've been calling for this since the beginning of the pandemic. He needs to cancel rent. He needs to cancel debt. There needs to be no interest charge on any of these things. And and you should look at small landlords and small landlords should be jumping on board with this with with rent strikes as well. And and give them some actual help, right? Like if the banks got five trillion dollars, why is the bank still trying to get money out of me with high interest rates? Why is the bank charging the small landlord, you know, high interest rates and things of that sort? All that stuff could be canceled. If you're gonna give five trillion dollars to the banks, then <laughs> you know, then why are we still paying the banks? They already got their money. They already got bailed out, right? Isn't that the point? Oh man, people can't pay uh, pay off all their loans and debts. We'll give the bank money to flush them with cash, and then they can cancel these debts, you know, till the end of the pandemic, and then figure out how to adjust it accordingly. That's all possible. It's just a matter of will that it's not done. Uh, so moving forward, we talked about the we talked about wars being a reason why. Um, you know, why immigrants come here as one of the reasons why immigrants come here um, and why there's a refugee crisis around the world. He has the power to use executive action to to end those wars, right? Like to end the occupation of various different countries, to end military action across the globe, uh, to, to end supporting Saudi Arabia uh, against their genocide uh, in Yemen. You could you could put an executive order to end all of that, figure out a plan to get the troops home and figure out how to provide aid and help create stability in that region rather than more instability with war in that region. He has the power to do that. Uh, he he has not. Instead, one of the things he's done is put he's he's essentially threatened to keep the economic sanctions from Trump on countries like Iran on and Venezuela uh, unless they do what he requests. Right. It which is join the, the nuclear deal, uh, which, again, sure, it seems very nice. But America is literally the only country that's ever dropped a nuclear bomb on any other country. We're the only country that's and now we're dictating what other countries can do with that kind of technology. Right. Like. We're the only ones that has actively used it. And now we're like, oh, we're going to be the arbiters of that as well. It seems a little hypocritical to me in that regard. Um, now, ending the uh, ending all these wars, ending the endless wars, which would just make them regular wars, uh, would also probably lead to demilitarizing the police. <laughs> because if, if the military is is not being funded as much, Right. And isn't that the? I mean, there's like surplus military equipment being given to the cops. What's the argument to make that? Oh, well, the cops need to be just as ready for national security defense as the National Guard and the military. And it's like now we're blurring the lines of law enforcement rather than that. If you defund the police and make it all about community funding, uh, community based policing um, and add social protections and mental health protections so that when somebody is having a, a, a bipolar episode and waving a, a knife, Cops that have no idea how to deal with someone that has bipolar disorder come in and, and don't just shoot that person. There is a, a trained mental health professional that can do that. So you so you can justify that because a lot of times when there's militarism abroad, that militarism comes back home to roost. And we saw that over the summer. And we've seen that in, in 2014 in Ferguson. We saw the protests uh, for for uh, Mike Brown and Eric Garner and all of these people that have been killed by police. So, you know, that's those are those are ways that he can help 
and actually do something good for the citizens. He could also cancel all student debt with an executive order. Uh, he, By the way, I'm getting all this stuff from Consortium News. Lee Camp wrote a great article about all the things that Joe Biden can do, uh, but most likely won't. Uh, it, he can cancel all $1.7 trillion of student loan debt if he wants to. He can literally sign that off. Uh, I believe in the pandemic, it, it the number kept going down. Like I remember seeing, I think it was like 25K at one point. And then it was like, oh, if it's it, now we're going to cancel 15K and less uh, to uh, 10K and less, right? Well, he can cancel all of it. He can just write an executive order and be like, no more. We're just going to cancel all the student loan debt, uh, which even, even like corporate um, news outlets like Business Insider were like, yeah, this would actually be pretty amazing. Because then now an entire generation of, uh, of of workers, an entire new generation of the working class can actually afford to buy shit. Like they're not saddled with hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of uh, loans. Right now it's a 10K. Like if you're, a, it will, they'll forgive up to $10,000 worth of um, student loans where the average is $32,000. So it's still like, okay, $22,000 is still an incredible large amount of money. Um, my I, I got somewhat fortunate uh, because there was a bunch of chicanery with my family and student loan debts. And I wound up having more than more than what I needed to, but uh, less than what it could have been because of my sister and my mom helping me out uh, my final year of college. But once I got out of college, I, re I like literally didn't want to be in debt. Uh, I, that was something that I was very terrified of being. I, I really didn't want to have any sort of debt. So I got a job. I got, I mean, I got several jobs and I basically just kept flooding money. Like I paid like three or four times more than what they were asking for. Um, and I just kept like putting more and more into the principal and knocking it down. I was broke for like the first two or three years out of college. Like I had no money. Uh, to do a, to to do virtually anything, I had to like stay live with my parents, and then when I did finally like pay all of it off and move into an apartment, the only apartment I could afford uh, was just like a real shithole. <laughs> but that's what people in our generation are forced to do, you know. Like that's 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 the only thing that I could do. Uh, but if you would have canceled all all those. To, to to think if 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 student loan debt was canceled and i'm not th this is not me saying like oh well it's unfair that i paid off my things and, I, but, and now these other kids no i don't give a shit i i, I paid it off uh, and that was my decision and now there's an opportunity where somebody doesn't have to struggle and i'm all for that like the less struggling people have to do is is that's the the better for everybody i think but you know if you cancel student loan debt think of all the things that these kids can invest in they could probably invest in a better home, better housing situation, maybe get a better car, maybe eat better food, like save money, actually, like actually have a fucking savings account. Like they could do all these things. It would be incredible. Now, one of the things that they're not going to talk about is that in 2005, Joe Biden and 18 Democrats I actually kind of remember this, um, this happening in, uh, is they voted against. Uh, against students declaring bankruptcy because of over, you know, over exorbitant student loan debt. And Joe Biden basically said, that's bad. We can't do that. But what we can do is apply this law for uh, multimillion dollar corporations, uh, large, large corporations and billionaires. We can let them declare bankruptcy whenever they want, because that helps the economy. That's good for the economy. Uh, so he basically went backwards on it. And now there is a way for him to make up for that, right? Like he keeps talking about how proud of his record he is. And when people bring up his record and shit on him for it, he's he gets mad about it and like storms off the screen and shit. But if you really want to show that that you understand what your record has done to the American people and, you're, and you know, whatever excuse you want to make for it, you can make for it. Um, but, you know, if you want to show that you, you actually give a shit about people. And here and, and here's I don't think he actually will do this. But if you want to look at it and say in 2005, I made a mistake and now I'm going to undo it with this executive action. 
and cancel all student loan debt, I think like everybody in America would be like, holy fuck, maybe there's actually some hope to get some progressive ide progressive ideologies through in Congress uh, under this president, right? Then you might actually be like the most progressive president is if you do all these things. But he's not going to because what what this really helps out, again, is the banks. It helps out Wall Street more than it helps out Main Street. And he's he is a Wall Street president. That's what he's going to that's that's what he is. And that's what he's going to be. He's always been that way. There's a 40 some odd year record showing that he is a corporate uh, a politician and, and he's going to continue to do that. Right. Not only that, but don't forget one of the first things we saw when he announced his presidency was the fact that he has no empathy for millennials. Like somehow us having student because we wanted to get an education. This is where the fault comes in because we wanted to be educated and go to college and learn so that we could be productive members of society in in the career and trade that we have chosen to be in, we accumulated debt. And that was our fault, our fault for wanting education. How dare we? How dare we want to try to make a better life for ourselves? There's no empathy for Joe Biden that a, that a, that a, a capitalistic system that looks at everything in the in the lens of a dollar sign. That's all millennials fault not the generation before that created that system. He has no empathy. That was one of the first things that came out uh, when, when he decided that he was going to run for president. One of the first things. So Keystone Excel was the other one that popped up this week. That he is going to... Uh, and, and this is another one that he's reversing from, from Trump. Um, the Keystone Excel pipeline... <laughs> Sorry, my sinuses are are not doing great uh, today. Uh, the weather keeps going up and down, and it's messing with my sinuses. So I apologize if it gets a little sniffly on the stream. But the Keystone XL pipeline was defeated under Obama because mostly because of activists, because people were protesting it. Uh, and then under Trump, he was like, "Nah, fuck it, I don't give a shit." <laughs> Right, because that's why. But because he didn't give a shit, he didn't care about anything. He just fucking wanted to wanted everybody to love him. That's all he wanted. Uh, and then Biden undid it. Right, it, it just basically went back to. Now, there's no mention of DAPL, the Dakota Access Pipeline, or the new Line Three. Uh, and I hadn't heard of it until I saw, you know, I, until I I watched Lee and Eleanor's live stream the other day, and I was like, holy shit, another one, fuck. But there's no mention of of either of these either, right? And it's nice that he's canceling a pipeline. It'd be great if he did that for fracking, if he genuinely gave a shit about climate change and, you know, wanted to sign a new Green New Deal. But he has come out, if you remember in the first debates, he is not for a Green New Deal. He's not for it. He does not care about it. Right. So how are you going to say that you give a shit about climate change, continue to support fracking and take down one pipeline? And all of a sudden we're going to be like, oh, this guy's going to save climate change. Like this guy's going to be the, the climate change president. No. Now, the other issue is uh, and conservatives are going to bring this up and, and so are progressives. And it's a legitimate issue to be talking about when it comes to, you know, canceling pipelines and things of that sort is jobs, right? What are these people going to do for jobs? Uh, I think I read uh, today that uh, th this pipeline employed like 50,000 people or something. So in a time of record unemployment, uh, you know, the, the question arises, is that the right thing to do? Is the right thing to do is to get rid of a pipeline? I, I don't know. Um, I think the environment is important. And I think there's a way that we don't have to make the Sophie's choice, right? We don't have to make the Sophie's choice of employ 50,000 people or save the environment, which is always how the narrative is, is driven, right? The narrative is always driven with these Sophie's choices when there is a solution standing right in front of us, which is there's a bunch of different uh, renewable sources of energy, like solar, for example, where all you have to do is is say, hey, we're going to offer you guys some job retraining. If you worked on the Keystone Excel pipeline, there are all these jobs available to help expand solar power. And we're going to look into solar power and we're going to, you know, tax them, tax, tax them less. And we're going to look to work with these other countries. They're going to manufacture parts uh, for for these solar panels. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to need people to learn how to build them, learn how to maintain them. Uh, we're going to need more jobs because we're going to look at, uh, you know, uh, adding software and things of that sort. Um, so there you go. There's an option of both. There's an option of both. But he's not going to do that. He is going to cancel pipelines. And then and then it'll come back down to that narrative of, well, you wanted me to cancel pipelines. And now I'm doing it. Now all these people are jobless. Well, you have an opportunity here to cancel a pipeline, but also instate a Green New Deal, which has which has provisions of how to put green jobs in place. Also, in the campaign trail, again, uh, why progressives are like, we don't believe this shit. We, we're not going to believe it until we see it is when we talked about climate change, there were a bunch of climate activists that asked them, hey, these pipelines are dangerous. These pipelines are are, are not awesome. What are we going to do about it? His, uh, his, his, his thing was to get mad at them. And then when they pushed him a little bit further, because that's what you do as a journalist and as an, as an activist, is you got to push against politicians. Uh, he said, go vote for someone else. Yeah, and I bet you they did. They probably went and voted for fucking Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard, Elizabeth Warren, who all had better climate policies than Joe Biden did. Here's the big one. This is the kicker. Joe Biden can use an executive order right now and give everybody health care. He can approve Medicare for all right fucking now. Right fucking now. Uh, section 1881A of the Social Security Act basically says the government can give people health care as long as there is a um, natural disaster that is uh, that they have been exposed to. Right. If they've been exposed to some kind of chemical or natural disaster that is affecting their health. We're in a fucking global pandemic. Is there is there any bigger natural disaster that could happen that we're all exposed to? I mean, everywhere. We're no matter what we do, we're we're at risk of exposure, right? If you have to go buy uh, things from the grocery store, if you have to get your car fixed up, you have to go in. Even when you're wearing masks, there's still a percentage that you're going to be exposed to all this stuff. We're in a global pandemic. You can enact Section 1881A of the Social Security Act right now and give every single American health care so that they can go to the doctor to take care of the things that they need. In tandem with that, you're going to have to create COVID triage centers and figure out how to route you know, other screenings because you can't have immunocompromised people that, that need cancer screenings and, and uh, chemotherapy and things of that sort in the same sort of environment with with, co with with patients that have COVID-19, right? Because it's such a, and now we have more uh, contagious versions of the virus. So like you have to be extra careful. So you need specific triage centers. So you set up those triage centers and you still have areas where people can go and get their cancer screenings, um, get their hearts checked up, get their brains checked up, get just regular checkups too, you, you know, just basic health checkups. But you give people health care and you put those provisions in place. That's what that's what that's what needs to happen in this scenario. And oh, so this is the other thing. So so, you know, people are like, well, I don't even know. Has, has this even happened? It, and it absolutely has. Lee uh, Lee Camp wrote a great piece for uh, Consortium News. And I believe the People's Party have also posted this. Uh, so check this out. This has happened before. They have used Section 1881A of the Social Security Act. Uh, and it's a whole area of uh, uh, Montana called Libby, Montana, which has a population of uh, 2627. He, he writes a little joke. There's a, a photo of downtown Libby, Montana there. Nice little downtown. It looks it looks pretty quaint. Um, I, lo I really enjoyed driving through Montana when I did a cross-country tour. It was uh, absolutely delightful. It's a gorgeous fucking state. Um, would love to get back out there again. Would love to just do. I would. I miss touring so much, you guys. Um, anyway, listen. So here's what he says: Libby, Montana, has Medicare for all because the entire community has been exposed to an airborne asbestos thanks to mining in the area. Therefore, Health and Human Services secured them Medicare for all. Shall we now take a moment to ponder whether there are other Americans who have been exposed to hazardous chemicals? chemicals and diseases recently allow me to think for a moment oh wait that's right everyone 
We're in a fucking pandemic. We've all been exposed. Biden could give everyone health care, allowing uh, us to join the rest of the developed world. And even without the pandemic, Biden's could still give most of Americans health care uh, for other exposures. Los Angeles is smog. The cancerous Roundup herbicide sprayed all over New York City, cities uh, near fracking wells or coal mines or oil spills. Or how about those 2000 cities across the U.S. that have excessive lead levels um, or everyone exposed to Everyone exposed to autotune. <laughs> he made a joke of that earlier. <laughs> um, Biden could give all of us health care right now. No excuses, no dicking around, no tomfoolery, no malarkey, no funny stuff. Give every American health care now. That's from Lee Camp. And he could. Uh, by the way, I live in a city that's been exposed to lead. Yeah, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you guys. Uh, too much lead in our waters. Huzzah. Exciting. Everybody in Pittsburgh should have health care. Everyone in Flint should have health care. Everyone in, in the bayous of uh, Louisiana, Erie, Pennsylvania, health care. Central Pennsylvania, Ohio, Youngstown faced a, 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 a earthquake because of fracking. Health care. Everyone in Alaska would deserve health care, too, because they have a program that allows oil companies to drill in their state, pending that they all get uh, a UBI because of this. And they're being exposed to, to hazardous chemicals and wastes. Health care. Isn't that shitty that the only way that Americans can get health care from its government is if the government agrees to expose them? To some awful fucking shit. How shitty of that system is that? Now, other things that he can do is uh, use an executive action to move the poverty line. Right, the poverty line kept moving down. You know, Trump kept redefining poverty as as if he was trying to be a strong man to poverty or some shit. Um. You could move right now because of the level of unemployment. You could move the poverty to say anyone making under thirty thousand uh, dollars is under the poverty level and and deserves some kind of help. Uh, that's that would be a lot of Americans right now. Even when you increase the wage to fifteen dollars an hour, which which he can do, and I believe they're talking about doing. Um, and I will talk about why even fifteen dollars an hour is not fucking enough. Even if you move that, you're only making. You're making under twenty five thousand dollars a year after taxes. I don't. I don't know how many people in this country could legitimately live off of twenty five thousand dollars with credit card debt, with car loans, with with if you own a house, uh, with that mortgage. On top of that, you 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 have to pay for health insurance. That'll probably that if you have a job that sponsors you comes out of your paycheck. You have other taxes that come out of your paycheck. You have food. If you have kids, oh, I love this bullshit. If you have kids, if you're a family with three kids, uh, poverty line is $20,000. Roughly. I'm estimating that number. Can you, if, if that's the case, right? Okay, so if that's the case, if they're saying you're a family of three and you only need $20,000 to to live and, and, and pay all your bills, that's great. Then, then why make the argument for billionaires? Everybody should just make $20,000. That should be the cap. Since that's all people need to make to, to survive, why does Jeff Bezos need close to a trillion dollars in personal income? He doesn't. The rest of it should be given out to, to help social programs <laughs> and feed the world. You could set... Uh, once you do set the minimum wage at fifteen dollars an hour, you should immediately put a cap on uh, on inflation and price gouging. That means the the price of shit can't go up. You can't increase your rents because people are making a little bit more money. And fifteen dollars an hour, not really all that much money, by the way. Like I said, if you're making fifteen dollars an hour as, with with a full time job, that's roughly twenty five. Uh, it's that's roughly twenty four twenty four nine, right? It's probably a lot less when you when you think about all the expenses and stuff that people have. Uh, that come out of their paychecks. So let's just say it's twenty four thousand dollars a year. That's still like not a lot of money. I made that kind of money 
when I worked for this little boutique design firm, that was the maximum we got. I couldn't even negotiate. We were we were getting more work and we were making the company more money because of the graphic designers work. And we couldn't fucking negotiate to get a pay raise. You know what they wanted to do? They wanted to give me twenty five two. <laughs> like they wanted to give me a two hundred dollar annual raise. That was the only thing that they could negotiate. And you know what happened when I was on that? I couldn't. Uh, I I assessed everything. I couldn't afford an apartment. Even when I was I was dating somebody at the time, and we were thinking about moving in together, I couldn't afford to pay my half of the rent or the utilities. I couldn't get health insurance with a full time job at this boutique firm. And I'm not blaming the my my art director or anything for this. It, this is just the way that it worked. And I could barely afford to buy food. Uh, pay for the repairs on my car, pay for gas and all of these other expenses and then keep up with my student loans as well. That was with $25,000. And they go, oh, you're a family of three. 20K is fine. You could, he could easily make the minimum wage $30 an hour, which I think he should. Uh, but doubtful that he'll get to it. We just agreed on $15 an hour after what a decade of, of people saying that shit that fifteen dollars should be the minimum wage, and that number hasn't gone up because we were having a hard enough time getting Democrats to to agree that fifteen dollars an hour was enough. In fact, when Bernie was pushing for fifteen dollars an hour in twenty sixteen, uh, Hillary was saying, "Oh, it should be twelve. That three dollars an hour is a significant difference when it comes to people living under the poverty line." The real poverty not, not the manufactured one. Uh, you, he could also use an executive action order to lock out corporations. He can legalize weed nationally, federally legalize weed, which will also immensely help the economy. It would also help people's mental health. It would help people's physical health. He can make people safer from nuclear weapons. I mentioned the Iran nuclear deal earlier. What if instead of you just holding people hostage in order to sign this fucking deal to get the medical supplies in Iran, what if you called for an armistice? What if you what if all nuclear weapons were were disarmed, globally speaking? And we figure out what else we can do with with nuclear weapons. Again, just a reminder, America is the only country that has ever launched a nuclear uh, bomb against another country. America is the only one. No other country decided to use nuclear weapons. But because America had this technology, there was then this 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 fear of nuclear pro proliferation. Well, sorry. Um, so other countries started developing nuclear weapons because they were like, holy shit, what if America decides to use it against us? That set the daisy chain. And now America is just, you know, all of these, like, let's control the nuclear. It's just... <laughs> them defending themselves. They created a problem, and now they're like, oh, well, we created the problem. We also have the solution to it. We will control who gets to have nuclear weapons. Those are all things that he can do right now that could make people's lives immensely better. Uh, will he do it? Uh, it's, it's unlikely. When it comes to Medicare for All, he's already said that he's not going to. He said he'd veto any Medicare for All bill um, that comes to his desk. He's the president for corporations. He's the president for for insurance companies, for big pharmaceutical, for Wall Street. Uh, I mean, like I said, the first things he does is un undoing everything that Trump did. And I'm not making an argument that he shouldn't be doing that. But I think there's more pressing matters, right? Protections for immigrants so that they don't get put into detention centers during a pandemic. So they don't have to be separated from their families during a pandemic. Yeah, he's creating a pathway to citizenship for them, but it's no no different than a pathway that they would have already had. You should be giving people health care. You should be canceling debt. You should be canceling people's student loan debt. You should be increasing the, the minimum wage to what it actually needs to be. Uh, so... You know, things that he can do, things that if you want to push this guy to the left, um, what people should be calling for. 
And I and I get it. You know, I I got a lot of this when I was uh, when it was inauguration day. I didn't watch the inauguration because I don't have any interest in in fawning over these these fucking oligarchs and and talking about their outfits and shit. Uh, being like, oh man, what a powerful outfit. Yeah, I I look at I saw somebody post the other just recently about how Kamala Harris and and Michelle Obama are are strong uh, role models for 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 African American women young african-american girls uh and and to to some degree that's true but to a lot it's not because if you look at kamala harris's record uh she's not someone that communities of color should look up to she put mothers of children in prison single moms single black moms in prison she laughed about a man on death row withheld evidence about it she's put people you know with nonviolent drug offenses in prison like this is not a role model i i don't think people in the in 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 this level of leadership with what they're doing with their power and leadership are role models they're just not okay uh i want to look at the comments and move to the last two stories of the day uh mimi it's good to see you thank you for tuning in uh fun fact for years uh biden's long history of plagiarism was used an example on college websites of what not to do and how it can negative, <laughs> negative affect one's future career prospects. Now, if you have a history of plagiarism, I guess you get to be president. Yeah, I actually brought this up in a, in a virtual show I did, and then I clipped it up and put it on YouTube. And someone like com- denounced me entirely because I brought that up. And there and I didn't just, you know, it's like, ah, Joe Biden plagiarized. Like I had video evidence uh, of news reports and things of that sort. And I, and I uh, did like this call and response segment. I, I really enjoyed the segment and you know, the people in the show enjoyed it as well. But the pro Biden people uh, want to ignore all of that. They want to rewrite the history of that. Right. Uh, my sister's a, a, an educator. And she was in that show and she saw that and she was like, I was so triggered <laughs> when I, <laughs> by that clip. And, you know, it's like, but, but look at the response that he gave to the media back then, right? The the response he gave to the media when he got caught plagiarizing speeches from Bobby Kennedy um, and uh, Neil Kinnock, I believe, um, outright plagiarized, including personal aspects of Neil Kinnock's life itself was plagiarized. He attacked the journalist. He got pissed off at journalists. He didn't apologize for what he did. He just said, oh, you guys are chastising me over one mistake. Fuck you. That was basically what he said. And bringing that sort of stuff up, people kind of people lose it and they go, oh, blah. and it's like, no, th- isn't this how Trump behaves? When you point out a, 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 a wrongdoing that he did, when you point out that that he is 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 a trust fund baby, doesn't he get pissed off and rant about it on Twitter? That's, I mean, I, I've I've pointed this out several times, and it's like I'm beating my head against. I get, I have people that they get mad at me because I I talk shit on Biden over the, uh, because of the facts. Yes, because of the facts. That's 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 why, uh, they got mad at me when I when I compare the two. Yes, exactly. When I compare the two, and I show the similarities between them, people get pissed because they want to they want to ignore that side of Joe Biden, right? Even and you don't even have to go as far as the 80s when when the plagiarism stories came out. And he lied about his college record, all those stories came out. You don't even have to go back to the 80s. Just look at how he reacted to to a black journalist asking if he's willing to take a mental health exam. Yeah, it's very exhausting. I mean, this 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 inauguration you know, I had people yelling at me saying, oh, it's only been one day. It's only been one. No, it's been 40 years, guys. This guy has been in an in, 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 in elected official for over 40 years. And in that 40 years, he has created some of the worst pieces of legislation and supported a lot of policies that led us to Trump. It, it's not one day. It's 40 years of shit that he's done that we're we're looking at that as that have amounted to where we are today he he is responsible he is an architect to those things and now he's not taking responsibility he has not apologized for that shit and he just gets mad at whoever brings it up and we're going to talk more about that in in the next uh in, in the upcoming segment here 
Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.